John Pounds, J-O-N-P-O-U-N-D-S, Chicago Public Art Group. I'm executive director there. So what you see when you look at this piece, and it's kind of amazing when you look at it. There's obvious references to the Klan and to Nazis um, and to bullet holes on a brick wall. Kind of surprisingly, you just sort of think about, well, a brick wall doesn't bleed, but it certainly suggests that this one does. And then a series of images that are African-inspired, a warrior of some sort in a traditional dress, the large figures that are pouring down here, and then you realize that there is, in fact, uh, handcuffs, and that the handcuffs really open here, and as the people fall out, in a sense, they fall into the community. They, they land here. So they may have been enslaved, they were African, they were enslaved for a period of time, but as they were released from slavery, as slavery finally uh, created that freedom, that they fell, in a sense, into a community that was not perhaps ready to support them uh, in, its full, in their fullness. Not to say that of all people, but certainly among the things that happened then was, and it's depicted here, is you know, a very greedy character, could be a pimp, figure of death, uh, snake up above it, looking very uh, ven venomous. But certainly all of this is a very powerful indictment, I think, of, uh, of, a, of the kind of person who would look at their own community and see it as a means to gain money, no matter what. And then in the midst of that, you get uh, drinking, jazz music, drugs, drugs of all sorts, quite a palimpsest of drugs, and dancing. One African-American, one Caucasian figure dancing together there, which is sort of an unusual thing from 1975. References again to uh, regressive reactionary uh, fascist forces and, and the Klan. And then you get to this really stunning and really quite disturbing section about the, uh, the what, what comes of the violence that, that is perpetrated through this system. The, the African nationalist and the Klan uh, pointing guns at each other as, as a kind of, of opposition. And then out of this confrontation of two different very powerful images comes uh, greed on one hand, which is depicted to be both African-American and Caucasian, uh, a figure which I would read very easily as being Martin Luther King by virtue of the, just the nature of the portraiture, poverty, which is seen to be a cross race, uh, and then as you move down here, images of prostitution, which again mean that it's essentially the enslavement of women and that it was not a way for women to, to really have a, a just life. We know that images are powerful. Because, in fact, if images had no power, why would we bother making them?